Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and updated our filters a little bit. We added in the count next to the uh, name of the filter here. We also handled, handled a loading state a little bit more elegantly with a sealed interface here to describe basically the state of um, you know this UI here. So if you missed it, I'll link a card in the top right. And today we're gonna talk about the cart, the cart fragment, the idea of adding things to the cart. Uh, you know, we've kind of been able to favorite things, we've expanded things, and now we just need to really get into the meat and potatoes of adding things to the cart. Um, so we'll just go ahead and jump right into it here. On screen, I've created just the bare bones of the cart fragment here, really nothing crazy at all. Um, Android entry point and everything else is boilerplate for, you know, creating a fragment. Uh, with that, we've created a little bit of a layout here that just has a blank epoxy recycler view that we'll use uh, you know, to our advantage. Uh, we went ahead and updated our nav graph here. We've just gone ahead and added an additional fragment tag here, nothing too crazy. Gave it a label, gave it a unique ID. Went ahead and also created and updated our menu bottom nav, the thing that fuels this little bottom area down here. Uh, we went ahead and uh, ordered it appropriately, put it in the middle, so now we have it appearing in the middle. And again, this ID here, the cart fragment matches up with the ID here uh, in order to actually make everything look uh, you know, nice and work and connect well and have this fragment inflated when they click this uh, option, all that good stuff. One little thing here is we do have a back arrow, so let's just go ahead and clean that up. And if you remember from a previous episode, we have the app bar configuration where we can specify the top level fragments. And so we'll just simply add in our cart fragment identification there. And then when we rerun it here, we click on cart and there will be nothing there. Really, really wonderful, very helpful stuff. Now we have a blank slate of what we want, uh, what we need to work with. But first and foremost, we need to handle the on click here because right now it looks like everything's in our cart and that is not true. So we'll need to update a model to handle that. We'll need to update the on click listeners. And then we can even get into updating maybe a little icon down here on the cart fragment based upon how many elements are in the cart just to make it feel again like a cohesive application. So we're gonna start pretty simply here in our application state. We're gonna go ahead and basically do uh, the exact same concept as our favorited and expanded product IDs, but we will say in cart product IDs. This will again just be a set of the integers, the IDs who, for the products that are inside of the cart. From here, we can go to the UI product. Again, we're gonna do something very simply here is in cart, that will be a Boolean that we declare false to start. Very, very good. And we can observe, we can add this information to our uh, state flow here. So view model store state flow map it dot uh, in cart product IDs. And then in here we'll have in cart product IDs. Pretty straightforward, very, very, very straightforward. And then in here again, Nothing too fancy is in cart is going to be that if the in cart product IDs dot contains the product dot ID. Wonderful. We're going to go ahead and have our little icon there uh, or, or our little Boolean there. Now we can jump into our epoxy controller. In the success case, we're going to go ahead and add our UI product. Nope, those are the filters. Sorry, the UI product epoxy model. We'll go in here. This has our UI product. And so expanded state favorite icon, let's just go down here and we'll say in cart status, so to speak. Go we'll in cart view, we'll say is visible if the UI product uh, dot is in cart. And there we go. That will just declare are they vis visible or gone for that view and uh, the UI will, will work exactly how we want. Now we're gonna go ahead and listen for clicks on the add to cart button. And again, we're just gonna need something very similar here. Go with add to cart clicked. This should feel pretty familiar if, uh, if you've been following the series so far. 
and then we'll go with the UI product, that product, and the ID. So again, the concept here is that we want to bubble up events, right? We want to, we don't want the epoxy model itself to be manipulating the store or anything along those lines. Instead, we just know, hey, this button was clicked, notify someone outside, someone that is quote unquote more intelligent than, than I am, and they will handle updating the state. Uh, they'll update the state, eventually this model will get redrawn, and then this in-cart view uh, will have a different visibility because this in-cart boolean uh, has been changed. So that's kind of the idea here. I like to keep the UI dumb, as they call it, so just all of the data that comes down, basically in this UI product, all of it that comes down, this cell knows how to update itself and how to lay itself out, and all of these different clicks are for um, you know, or different interactions are for someone else to handle. So we're gonna, of course, uh, yep, we're gonna need to add another function in here. All right, so I updated our models here with this on add cart click. If we look at the function, very straightforward. We're passed in a product ID. We go ahead and fetch the current product IDs that are in the, in the cart. We do our little bit of logic to either add it to the cart or remove it to the cart. And then we go ahead and copy, we update our state here. So actually, I think this is gonna be everything we need in order to get the UI working here. Let's see when it runs. Coming back to life here, we should see nothing in the cart to start, right? We've lost that little item. If we go ahead and click it, boom, we are now in the cart. Look at how instantaneous that is as well. Really, really wonderful stuff. Feels great. We have uh, four terabyte and the sand disk in cart. Go ahead and fling all around here. We're not leaking. We'll even add the first one. We see SanDisk, we see four terabytes, and nothing else has been selected, and even the first one. So wonderful. We actually are modifying this data accordingly. Let's just put a breakpoint real quick right here. And in the event that we click something else, we can go ahead and let's just step over this one really quickly. And now we can see the current product IDs in the cart here. 12, 10, 1, that makes sense. After all this ends up running, let's just put another one down here and we jump to it. Now the new product ID is in the cart, 12, 10, 1, 2. Absolutely wonderful. We did select the second icon there or the second item there. So we know that all of this is working as expected. Really, really good stuff. We even see that UI feedback here of something being selected and we are all good. So wonderful, want to keep this one a little bit shorter. There is still more, but uh, so stick around for some extra credit. If you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. If you're enjoying the content, you like the style and you notice you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Definitely don't be a stranger in the comments. I'll go ahead and reply to anything that I possibly can. And now let's go ahead and update the fact that, you know, we have the information here about how many elements are in this cart, right? Because we know this product is in there, this one is, and this one isn't, and we can repeat that for all of the different products. We go ahead and listen to the correct flow. We can figure out the exact number here that we should be putting on this little toolbar. Yep, so it looks like here we can go ahead and add a badge, either it being, you know, just, hey, something's there. We can actually number it or then uh, it looks like we have you know, a maximum amount that we can get to here. So I'm sure this is a familiar concept that you've seen. We're gonna go ahead with the middle one because we actually wanna see the feedback of how many elements are in the cart, right? We don't just care you know, to see that yes, one or N items are in there. No, we wanna know, you know five items are in there or 15 or whatever the case is. Um, because we are using the bottom navigation, there is some very nice nifty stuff along the way. Uh, don't worry, I'll link a card or, or I'll link something in the description here for this um, documentation. But we can see we can just ask the get or create badge function on our bottom navigation. We can set it visible to true and we can go ahead and set a number corresponding to the number of elements in our case that are in the cart. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. Yep, and then we can just simply remove a badge here. So this is great. The one thing to notice here is that this is at the activity level, right? Because this is not on a fragment level. This is a fragment level, but the actual bottom sheet is, or sorry, the bottom navigation is at the activity level here. So get or create badge. That goes ahead and creates the badge. And then we can say like, for instance, number equals five. So let's just go ahead and rerun that real quick. I'm interested to see how that looks and if that's exactly what we need. Yep, wonderful, right? So that's what it's gonna eventually look like, but obviously we want it to connect to this information here. 
So at the moment, we don't have a way to actually access our store. If we take a look at the products list fragment, the store is hidden inside of our view model here. Uh, and so uh, I'm torn on if we need an activity view model. Obviously, it's a pretty good idea. But the other thing is we really just need the store at the moment. So if we make it a, uh, a late init var store and this is the application state of store sorry i think i did the wrong thing it should be store of application state my apologies we can go ahead and annotate it with the at inject there so that we are getting the only store the single store for this application because again we've set this up to be a singleton pattern so in the fragment it exists inside the view model in the activity we're just going to put it right in the activity for at least for now but if we create a view model we'll go ahead and do that so then we can say store dot state flow we're going to go ahead and map it to just the in cart product ids we'll transition this to uh let's do distinct until changed as live data dot observe we'll go ahead and attach this and then we simply have you know what, why don't we just do it like this? We'll just go ahead and map it all the way down to the size. So now this just gives us the actual size of which uh, the number of elements in our cart that we have, right? Sorry, I don't know if that made sense, but let me just finish this. Uh, instead of five, it'll be, let's rename this to number products in cart. And then we'll just do that. Number of products in cart. Sure, I think that's all we need to do here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and rerun it. Obviously it won't be five. And instead here we can just, uh, yeah. So we have zero, I think we can clean that up. But wow, look at that, we click it and it just updates just like that. Obviously on this page, we don't have anything yet, but that's okay. We'll figure that out in the future. I'm not too worried about that. That's just another bit of manipulation here. But as we go ahead and click through it, we see it reacting exactly like it should. Uh, that is really, really wonderful. Now, the only other thing to do here is, um, yeah, I don't like the idea of having just zero there. So I think we can very easily just change that by updating this to be an apply block. We can say number equals that and is visible is going to be if the number of products in the cart does not equal Let's go with the fact that it's greater than zero. I can't imagine it being negative one, two, or three, but um, we'll just make sure. So yet we don't see anything in the cart, then we see some things in the cart, and then when we go ahead and unselect, we have nothing in the cart there. So, yep, here we go. We're now making a pretty reactive application here. This is really, really helpful stuff with the whole Redux idea, because now the main activity can even hook into the store, right? It has another little arm that it's saying, hey, give me the info that I need. When any of this stuff changes here due to any fragment, anything that happens behind the scenes, any other activity, any other action, whatever the case is, the activity is notified of the change. We have our UI reacting accordingly. We have our UI, like our UI within the element reacting accordingly. We have our UI down here in the bottom nav working correctly and everything just feels cohesive now right of course once we get a ui here we're going to go ahead and you know actually see something inside of the cart but for now um, this is exactly what i wanted to accomplish so smash that like button if you made it this far i'd really really appreciate it let me know how i'm doing i think this content is pretty pretty interesting um you know redux really just kind of showing off the pattern here and uh just how reactive our application can be with something like flow I'm really, really enjoying this. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.